Have you totally taken leave of your senses? Well, obviously, you think I have. Why did you tell Holly, of all people, that the disc was stolen? What? You know that's a blatant violation of WSB security. I didn't tell her anything. Really? Then how did she find out? Well, what makes you so sure? I just overheard her having a nice little chat with Luke about it. What was she talking to him about? Gee, nothing special. Did he have the disc? Did he know it disappeared the night his casino opened? Little things like that, you know? Interesting. How did she know it was missing? You tell me. What, did, did she eavesdrop on a conversation you had with Valentine? What? Eavesdrop. That's got to be it. What? The day that you and um, Valentine and Gerald were here. The, the day that we were talking about the explosion? Right. Holly was here also. No, no. I, I don't recall saying anything in front of her. I think we're all so wrapped up in talking about the disc that nobody happened to know that she was standing here. She probably heard bits and pieces of the conversation and figured it all out for herself. Quite frankly, I don't care how she found out. You just get her to stop playing super sleuth. Actually, I think this may work to our advantage. How? Luke may have told us something. Or maybe she gave him more reason to keep his mouth shut if he does have the disc. Look, I'm the agent here. I'll handle Luke, not your wife. I think you'd prefer that. Or are we switching partners again? Scorpio. Headquarters now? Well, why? Well, can't somebody else handle that? But what is the point of having an entire police force when it seems I've got to do everything? All right. I'll be down. Bloody incompetence. You're uh, not drinking tonight, Professor? No, my ulcer. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Take away a man's drink, rob him of his soul. Oh, Edward, what nonsense, really. <laughs> I understand you were in the hospital too, Professor. Only for a few days. I'm fine now. You know, Professor, it's a shame we didn't coordinate our timing a little better. We could have shared a room. <laughs> Grant, as much as you like talking with the professor, you were in hardly any condition for a conversation. Yes, that he was not. Oh, it must have been dreadful for you, Grant. Well, it wasn't at all, Isla, to tell you the truth. I don't remember it. I was pretty much out of it until the anti-venom arrived. When it finally arrived? I think it is so strange that both the anti-venom and the medicine given to the man who died on the operating table were both contaminated. How's that uh, Boulan investigation going, Monica? Well, we're still looking into it, Edward. All this talk about work, it makes me feel like a dilettante. All I do is putter around my garden. Oh, I'd very willingly change places with you, Mrs. Quartermain. I thought you were finished with your project. Oh, there's something new always coming up. Lately, my work's overwhelmed me. Mm. I'm just glad you were able to spare a few hours to join us. Not even my work would keep me from welcoming you home from the hospital. I'm so glad you are all right, son. Dinner is ready. Uh oh, oh shall yourself. we go in? Yeah. Oh, I'll get it. Excuse me. What am I going to this? Oh, yeah. oh, yes. Dr. Putnam? It's for you. If it's Natalie, the answer's no. Mm -hmm. Hello? What's all this about your not being able to come to the casino tonight? That's right. We have to have a meeting. I need to give you the details of the plan. What? Gregory, he is a marvelous piano player. You're going to love it when you hear it. I sing songs. And if you have a piano, oh, I have a picture. We can't discuss this over the phone. Natalie tells me there's a boathouse on the Quartermain estate. Wait a second, Gregory. That's hard there at 11 o'clock. There are people here. Dr. Gerald, for one, all of the quarter. Just be there. Well, anybody for another night, Captain? Oh, not for me, thank you. And certainly not for you, Edward. I need a steady arm to escort me upstairs. Yeah, sounds like my cue. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've kept you all up far too no. long. No. Not at all, Professor. There's nothing I enjoy more than being surrounded by my family. Mm. Well, good night, everyone. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. I guess we're saying good night, too. Good, good night, night, sir. Good night, night Grant. See you. Good, good night. night. It's down to just us three. Have a seat, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> right. You don't 
don't have any family around here, do you, Dr. Gerald? No, I'm afraid not anywhere. Though since meeting Grant, I must say I, I've come to regard him as family. Thank you, Professor. I mean that, Grant. In fact, well, now's as good a time as any to make my announcement. Announcement? I'd like to start a, a trust fund for your firstborn child. Doctor, I don't know what to say. Professor, you really don't have to do that. I want to. In fact, I've already told Lee Baldwin to draw up the papers, if you don't mind. On one condition, you be godfather to our baby. Why, I'd be honored. That's very generous of you, Professor. No. No, it's generous of you and Grant to allow me to be part of your family. Well, now I'd best be going. Well, now wait. Why don't you take a peek at the new wing? We'll show you the room that we're planning for your godchild. Oh, I'd like that very much. I hope my gift isn't putting you under any pressure. How's that, Doctor? Well, I just assume that you and Celia plan to have children. Well, yes, yes. I'd say three. What about you, Grant? Well, darling, I seem to recall you were saying something about uh, an even dozen at, at one oh, point. Oh, well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> this way. <laughs> oh, dear. Children are such a joy. I've often wondered what would have happened had I... Oh, all right. Oh, I've got you, sir. Oh, oh. Now, please, don't move. Don't move. Oh, I'm all right. Just take a seat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you could have written me. Are you all right? Oh, yes, head. I'm fine. <laughs> Doctor, are you sure you're all right? Perfectly. <laughs> oh, that was quite a fall. I think you... you saved my life, Grant. <laughs> you know, there's an old saying. Once you've saved a life, you're responsible for that life. I guess you're stuck with me. Doctor, that's a responsibility I gladly accept. Listen, why don't you, uh... Why don't you see the room some other time? Yes. I'll give you a hand and I'll, I'll walk you out to your car. No, no, no. I'll call you tomorrow. Thank you again, Professor. Thank you, Grant. Good night, Celia. Good, Good night. Professor. Oh, you're a very dear friend and a very dear man. Why, thank you. Thank you, my boy. Lie down on the couch for a little while. All hmm? right. I don't think uh, playing the hero was quite what Dr. Weber had in mind for you today. <sighs> Boy, I just need to put my feet up for a while. I can't understand it. I'm just <sighs> so tired all of a sudden. You had a long day. God, poor Professor Charles. The man's been working so hard. Probably has no time at all to sleep. I imagine that's why he fell. He's such a sweet man, thinking about our children. He is a sweet man, isn't he? Grant, we are going to have children one day, aren't we? Of course we will, I had thought I wanted to wait, but I'm not so sure anymore. Grant? I didn't know you were still up. Can I get you anything? Is there a blanket around? I'll find one. I want to have a baby with you, Grant. A little boy. One who looks just like you.
Well, you're up late. I was waiting for you. Where have you been? Headquarters. Where were you earlier? At Luke's. Well, at least I didn't have to prod you for the truth. Obviously, you've been talking to Connie. I didn't realize she was moonlighting as your...